um, playing with this in the homework and then in the future we will use it. We also spend time on decoherence. So this decoherence, I think uh, I just follow usually what people say. Decoherence, that has two types, right? One is T1, one is T2. And sometimes people call this T1 as the transverse or, or longitudinal. I kind of suddenly forgot. I, I don't write it. So one is longitudinal, one is transverse uh, decoherence time. I try to Google, see which one is which. So decoherence time have two, two types of them, right? Then for T1, what is that? It is the how fast the excited state loses its energy. So how do we measure it? We start with the ground state. We apply a pi pulse on the broad sphere. So at the ground state, maybe this is the ground state. And then we apply a pi pulse. So it is excited to the uh, excited state. And then we just wait. Right? We can measure it right away to see whether it's still at excited state or at ground state, or we wait. So at, at different time d, I try to do the measurement. I have different probability to get E at the excited or ground state. So as a result, of course, when I measure it right after the excitation, I expect 100% of probability that it will be in the excited state. And then when the time goes by, it will gradually relax, relax, go back to the ground state. So that's how I fit this line. Again, this is a log scale. And if I try to fit this line, it will be something e to the power negative t over t1. And this t1 is the uh, t1 time, the co decoherence time. So this is talking about when I excite the um, quantum mechanical system excite the qubit to a higher energy state. How long does it take for it to lose the energy and go to the ground state? Again, this is just a characteristic time, right? Because for the fitting, it doesn't mean that after T1, all of them will be um, at ground state or before T1, all will be at the excited state. So this is T1. Another thing we are talking about is the T2. T2 is Again, the co decoherence time, but sometimes we call it defacing time. Right? It's related to the defacing. Uh, sometimes this is this call it the flipping. Right? You're flipping from the excited state to the ground state. So how do we measure the, the, the uh, experimentally? How one way, right? Someone just came to me say that are uh, there other ways? Yes, they are. And actually, I, I I claim this is good, but maybe I'm wrong. We can discuss which one is the best experimental method. Um, so uh, we start with the ground state again. Then we apply a pi over two pulse, right? Don't worry about what is the meaning of pi over two pulse. What you're saying is just rotating about the broad sphere by <laughs> pi over 2. That's it, right? And how we realize it is another thing we will study in the future. So in this case, I actually apply a pulse so that it will go from ground to the plus. Okay, so it will go to here. Maybe let me use another color. It will go from here to here because this plus state is 1 over square root 2 ground state and excited state, right? It's a pure state, but it's a linear superposition of the ground state and pure state. Now, the way we do it is that we also try to apply a so-called detuning, which you just accept it for now, so that it actually will then rotate about this equator, okay, with a certain frequency. This is equal to the detuning frequency, right? So, Let's then wait for time d, and we apply another pi over 2 pulse. Now, if it did not move, just at the beginning, I apply another pi over 2 pulse, you see that it is actually rotating about this axis, right? About this y axis. I apply another pi over 2 pulse, it should go to e, right? To excite her state, because it was here, and I do it clockwise, if I look from this direction, and then I bring it to the excited state. So I measure it, I should get 100% excited state, right? But if it actually is moving, for example, it moved to the minus side, I apply another pi over two pulse, then it will go back to the ground state, right? So uh, how about those in between? For example, you just move to this point. 
when I rotate it by pi over 2, it will still stay at this point, right? Because I'm rotating about this axis. And when you do measurement, you have 50% to get 0 and 50% to get 1. And that's something in between here, right? So you will see this oscillation when you wait for the time. When the time, when the D increase, then you will oscillate. Whenever you see the peak, it's because it's either at the plus state or at the minus state, right? So you keep oscillating. If there's no defacing, then you should expect a constant oscillating pulse. But because of defacing, the vector, as we said, is actually getting shorter, the effective vector, now becomes a mixed state. It's just that you have many more uh, other states, so the vector becomes shorter, a way to model it, right? Like the density matrix, this A, it will become shorter and shorter because you have a uh, becomes more and more difficult to distinguish whether it is uh, on the other, uh, which side of this vector, right? So this one will become shorter and shorter. And imagine if it's so short that it is zero length. This is completely mixed state. When it is zero ring, when you do measurement, you get 50% zero excited or 50% ground state, right? So this envelope, we can call it the T2 time because this envelope, can be fit by e to the power t over t2, okay? But however, we say that uh, this is not actually t2 because when we're doing this measurement, t1 has the effect also. So actually what we are measuring is the t star, okay? The real t2 can be found by using this equation, okay? So that is a review on the measurement of the decoherence time, okay? So the is actually Yeah, yeah. That's right. So then for all, I should put T over uh, T over capital T star in that case. Okay? And sometimes we call this T two as T five. Okay. Question. Yeah. So basically, these two are different effects. In the first effect, the particle is going from the, trying to go towards ground state, right? That's the chart on the left. On the other one, uh, if you were the way you're drawing on the box here, the vector is basically kind of collapsing towards the center and it's rotating across the equator. Yeah. Um, so, uh, why does that not happen in the left case? So let's say if you had a... It will. If you mix... I mean, you cannot distinguish them. But here, uh, is, uh, you are actually at this uh, high energy state, right? So it's dominated by uh, this one. Because here you are pure state. You actually don't have any uh, much uh, defacing. So it looks to me like T1 is way bigger than T2. That's right. effect from T2. I, I see what you mean. You would never be able to measure T1 if both, ex, uh, both uh, phenomena is being experienced by the particle. You would have to have T2 much larger than T1. Yeah, that's a good question. I need to think about that, right? So uh, if this is at the excited state, um, I, I believe uh, the, the, this might probably related to the master equation, right? We, we cannot just say, I, I guess, right? Now this one, I need to check. Because this is in a pure state, the defacing is more like you add the phase information, the, uh, the uncertainty about the phase information. So even you add the uncertainty of the phase in front of the excited state, it is still the excited state because the phase doesn't matter. In this experiment, we are looking, the phase actually have an observable effect by doing, the, doing this operation. Because when the phase is opposite, I will bring it to excited ground. When it is same, I will bring it to the ground, right? Because here, you, also, you have A0 plus B1, right? A excited plus B ground. It's just that A and B relative phase are changing, right? Uh, from here, if let's say you're doing measurement just to look at the total energy, um, 
actually total energy might also uh, it won't change much it won't change if I just look at the total energy uh, if you only say the phase is uh, different right so so I so yes the phase will have effect on this one but you cannot measure it so it doesn't have effect it has effect on the wave function but however the phase has no observable effect when you only have the basis state okay I'm a little confused yeah. We try not to think going towards the ground state. Um, I, I think there's no, a, no simple way of doing that uh, because you really just lose the energy. It's not a unitary transformation. The energy does not conserve. You are not doing a knock gate. It just loses the energy, so it's a dissipative action. Okay. Because this one, you do, you do not lose energy. Oh yeah, but, but oh, you do not lose energy, but at the same time you have more mixed states, yes. That, that's right, yeah. No, no, you start with a pure state and then you go to another pure state. No middle, yeah. It's it just quantum mechanics, right? You, you, if you go from the third floor, you go to the second floor, you can say that, oh, first I experienced 2.54 and then to the second floor when I drop from third to fourth, third and second floor. But for quantum mechanics, you, you just go from this state to another state. The transience is difficult to say. Maybe I'm not good enough to describe. But in quantum mechanics, state is state. You cannot have a middle state. But the data you're showing on the left chart does. Because no, no, no. This is probability. How much chance when I measure, I will get one. Right? Okay. I get this is because I did a lot of measurement. Okay, but well, you wouldn't take this and try to project it. It is just a statistics. I cannot project that. Okay. 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 Yeah, good to ask. I, mean, I, I, I don't think I really answered your question, but... Uh, we point out some different facts and that help us to understand. I also need to understand better, but looks like I, I believe this is because, yeah, this is a good point, right? Phase should have effect, but I feel that this phase is uh, not, has no effect for pure state. Okay, so, so all your questions actually lead to what is a valid measurement. So there is more profound behind that, maybe out of my ability.